Hello. Today I'm going to have a look at M. Graham gouache. Um, as you can see, I've looked at them before. Now the primaries in M. Graham's are a little bit um, fusing. They say that as a yellow spec um, spectrum is the yellow. Okay, I, I agree with that. Um, but they say Pathalo Blue is, is the primary. Not so sure about that one. We'll test it out. And Pro Roll Red is the primary red. And um, that's a new one on me too. So first of all, let's check them out for pigment. They look good. A little brush over here, make sure it's clean. I'll just put a little bit of red there. Put the lid back on. And we'll spread that around. Oh, it seems to be nice and pigmented. It is a very pretty red. To me though, it's got a little bit too much possibly orange in it to be primary, but we'll see how it reacts with the others. There we go. And the yellow. Whoops, whoops, whoops. A lot of yellow there. Lid back on. Wipe the paintbrush. I'm just going to move some of this yellow up to the square above it. We can use it for testing mixes. I mean, it's a pretty colour. Moves nicely across the paper, nice and smooth, no lumps. It's a nice yellow. Inside the lines was never my forte. And now the blue. Now this is Pathello blue. And always Pathello blue was my student's favourite in any medium. Um, everybody loved it, particularly mixed with a little bit of white. Beautiful rich blue. To me it does appear to be a little on the purple side to be primary, but I'm willing to be wrong. Dried my brush a little bit too much. Okay. So far, so pretty. Let's see how the fellow blue no, let's see how the red acts with the yellow. To, um, should make a, a nice orange, particularly with this red. Mm. One test for a primary is mixing the red and blue together. Whoa, this red is strong. That yellow has got no hope. I have to add a bit more yellow if we're going to get orange. <coughs> Just put it on my palette over here. I don't want to get the mouth of the tube dirty. Yep, this is one strong red. So 
So a little bit of yellow and a lot of red, I'd say, to make a, any kind of orange. But there we go. That's a nice strong dark orange anyway. And if we wanted to make a lighter orange, we need much more yellow. Even with just a little bit that was on my brush. The red is still coming through fairly dark. Hmm. We'll let them dry. And while we're on the subject of orange, maybe we'll do another one. So one with mainly yellow and just a drop of red. Seeing it's so strong. So I'm just gonna just pick a bit up from the edge of the pot tube. <laughs> And you can see what's happening. Nice orange, but it's a very red orange. How much of this yellow do we have to add? Okay, I'm not giving up. Let's check how much you can see. I'm the same. And I'm not going to add any more red to my brush. Just what's left from there, from that one. Well, at least it's not red it's almost an earthy orange okay let's get away from our oranges let's test the red and blue now both of these are strong colors so i think i'll put some on my palette have to wait for this to dry at the moment I'm getting too much glare to actually see what color it really is so we'll set another one maybe with less blue they're both such very 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 strong colors the slightest amount seems to send them off And I'm going to water this down a bit and see how this behaves. It's such a strong pigment. So this is almost, almost watercolour consistency. And it's still really, really bright. Let's get a tiny, tiny bit of blue.
Yeah, so I don't like this red as a primary red. It's um, it's definitely got some orange in it, which is why we're getting more brown colours when we mix it with blue. A little bit more blue. We're not getting a nice clean purple. Just very, very odd that they would say that these were primaries. I just don't see them that way. But we'll try the green next and see how the blue acts with yellow. I have a feeling I'm going to need a lot of yellow. I'll put some up here. something a bit different. Now that I've added more water you can see why this blue is so popular comes a with more water or with white beautiful blue but is it primary let's have a see mm, it does make a nice green maybe it's the red that was throwing me off No, I, I don't think it's as vibrant as I usually get when mixing primaries together. There's a little bit of contrast I have. The purple. This is what I would expect when mixing blue and red. Tell you what, let's add some white. Now, because the um, M. Graham only came in 15 mil tubes and I wanted a large white, I don't have the M. Graham white, I have the Schmenke. I think it's Schmenke. And it's almost all gone. Ah, there's some down the bottom there. And today, I did this. I got some dry ground pigment, titanium white, mixed it with um, gum arabic, honey, um, glycerin, a bit of preservative, and of course water, and made my own because I'm just tired of running out of it. And here's some down here that I used earlier in the day, so I'll just re-wet this. And for people that say, you know, you can't re-wet gouache back to the creamy consistency, yeah, you can. You just have to be a little bit more patient than maybe you're becoming. I don't know. I've just heard it said so often lately and it's just very confusing because it comes back exactly to the creamy consistency that it had when it came out of the tube. It's much too much white. Never mind. 
So on this um, purple that was purchased as a purple, with some white over it, it's beautiful. And this purple that was mixed with those very dubious primaries, I don't know, but to me that it's not purple. It's a purple tone. It's a, it's a warm, purplish. It's not the lovely sweet purple that I was hoping for. So, um, nothing wrong with the paints. I just wouldn't get a primary set of them and expect to be able to make every colour fairly easily. But they do have a lot of different colours. Um, this is a particular favourite of mine. Put a little bit of that down to show you. Magenta is always closer to the primary than any red, but this rose is a little bit more magenta-ish. So let's try and make a orange out of that because I have no. Let's try and make a purple because I have some blue too. Blue's strong, so I'm betting it's going to make a better purple than the primary red. you can see that I've done anything wrong here that would make it react like this please let me know in the comments but to me this is a better purple than the primary red is ever going to give I do I bet you can get some nice browns with that so called primary red just mix a little bit of white in with that Give them all a chance to dry. Under this light when everything's wet it's just very glary. The other blue I have is cobalt. So I'll put some of that down. the rose hmm. Oops. with the rose over here Running out of rose. and the cobalt blue
an even better purple. I'll just set that dry. I'll pop up here and make a green with the yellow and the cobalt blue. Very hard to go wrong with any brilliant yellow when you're mixing. Now let's just set covering powers while they dry. I've already started Danny accidentally. So when layering and not blending we need less water, less fiddling, more just putting it down and moving on because if we fiddle too much or use too much water that will reactivate the bottom layer and it will start blending instead of layering. I won't try the white because it's not in grey and white. So it, it lays over, it does its job as gouache there. All in all, I think they're, they're quite heavily pig, pigmented. That's where I've added a bit too much water. There and there, too much water. And But they are very heavily pigmented. They go on nice and smooth and beautifully smooth. I know from experience that they will dry on your palette and re-wet to in a nice creamy um, consistency like you needed to. Here's a pink that I was using earlier in the day. Once again, it hasn't got the... Hmm, let's try the green then because the pink doesn't have the... It has white in it and I don't have the M gray and white so I must have used the schminky or... So here's a sap green and a little bit of working it. What you can do um, instead of working it a lot to get it to creamy consistency again is just spray it and walk away. Do something else. Spray your paints first. Walk away. Come back. Get your drawing ready or whatever. And uh, five minutes later it will be back to its normal self. Let's try overlaying this creamy, gouache so it certainly does come back to itself and if you want to have a look and see what the sap green is this is the sap green that I was using earlier today it has dried on my palette but it has come back to being like it was just out of the tube. Now they're one of the more expensive but not the most expensive. I think they're well worth having. Um, check through the colour list and see what colours that you might be lacking in other sets that you can make up with with these but I uh, wouldn't use them as a primary set for mixing. But they have some pretty colours and 
can be worth a look. And I hope you've enjoyed this. An odd looking little page we've got here. So that's a M. Graham Pants. I got them on Amazon because I can't buy them locally. Um, in America you can definitely get them locally because they are made in America. I believe it's a semi-small family business or it may have grown since I read up on it. Um, and they're made with honey to a very old recipe. It's the same recipe I use on mine. And that's all there is to it, I guess. Happy painting. Bye.